How do you see uh, the role of the Gulf states in this, specifically in perhaps trying to de-escalate the tensions, the roles of some of the leaders in, in the region mm -hmm. uh, in bringing the U.S. and Iran together? There's clearly been a shift in the Gulf states uh, in the midst of this crisis of escalation between the U.S. and Iran. Uh, we, we, you know, had a clear idea of sort of hawks and doves within the Gulf states with Saudi Arabia and the UAE kind of taking a harder line against Iran and kind of urging more U.S. intervention uh, to tip the balance uh, more kind of in their favor and their competition with Iran. And, and that clearly has shifted as the Iranian threat has become more immediate um, and as these states have had been sort of less confident about the U.S. and how they will be able to protect them and these kind of uh, real vulnerabilities that these Gulf states have. So there's been more unanimity, I would say, in the Gulf about uh, de-escalating. Um, and that does provide some opportunities. Uh, we've seen even the Saudi uh, defense minister coming, uh, or deputy defense minister coming on behalf of his brother, so Khalid bin Salman, coming to Washington to try to coordinate and to urge de-escalation. We've seen a much more uniform voice from the UAE ur urging de-escalation. And that could provide a role for some of those states that have better contacts between uh, both the United States and Iran. Um, at the same time, though, I think if we look across the Gulf uh, as this crisis kind of um, escalates, there's a real um, challenge for these states to keep their populations unified uh, and to kind of insulate them from the kind of threats that, that Iran can pose, both on the military side and also on the, the opportunity for Iran to kind of play on divisions within society. So it's very clear not a single GCC member wants this conflict to escalate further, and they're all doing what they can in their own ways to stop that. I think it's very clear that the region is poised between three possibilities. One is an escalation uh, that leads to conflict, either one dramatic escalation or a series of escalations that eventually ends up with an exchange of major combat operations or something like that. In other words, a war, a direct normal kinetic war. We could see a uh, re return to the exchange of maximum pressure versus maximum resistance, but a very calibrated maximum resistance in which uh, Ir Iran uh, strives not to kill many people, certainly not to kill any Americans, and to go back to the kind of tension that we saw uh, during most of 2019, you know, beginning in May, when Iran started its campaign of, of, uh, of, of attacks. Um, and that's possible. Um, but I don't think that would get anybody anywhere. I think it's, it's more interesting to look at how the killing of Soleimani and Iran's apparently dramatic but actually carefully uh, inconsequential strike in uh, Iraq might open the space for a real reduction in tensions. The, Iran could look to this uh, as a moment to institute a long pause, to see what's now possible diplomatically and economically uh, in the run-up to the next U.S. election, and, and look for a calmer period. Start talking to Europeans, to East Asians, see what can be done to chip around the edges of the sanctions, and, and begin increasing a dialogue with Gulf countries. Every single Gulf country now uh, even Saudi Arabia has some form of dialogue with Iran, and uh, all of them have uh, a, a, at least a direct bilateral exchange with Iran, except for the Saudis, and the Saudis may be developing it as well. Uh, and that means that uh, communications on a bilateral basis between Gulf states and Iran are, are, have increased because of these, these tensions. And if the tensions decrease, there is a possibility that, that uh, those discussions could go forward on the basis of issues of, of mutual um, agreement, like maritime security, energy, trade, things like that, where they can begin to discuss uh, issues they agree on.